The Zuds Wana Cave, located in Georgia, is a significant archaeological site that has provided remarkable insights into Upper Paleolithic hunter-gatherer communities. The site, which dates back approximately 30,000 to 25,000 years ago, offers evidence of early human life in the region, particularly through the remains of the Zuds Wana hunter-gatherers. The Zuds Wana genome is ancestral to many peoples of the Eurasia, including Natufians, Caucasus and Iranian hunter-gatherers, and Anatolian hunter-gatherers. One of the most remarkable discoveries at Zuds Wana Cave is the presence of early textiles and dyed flax fibers, indicating that these hunter-gatherers had developed sophisticated techniques for making clothing and possibly other fabric items. This evidence suggests a degree of social and cultural complexity, as well as adaptability to their environment. In this video, we will review the DNA results of an Upper Paleolithic hunter-gatherer from the Zuds Wana Cave in Georgia. The individual is female and carries mitochondrial lineage U6. With PCA-based ethnicity calculators, she clusters with East Mediterraneans and European Romani. Both G25 and Eurogene's Inmani Oracle show a presence of South Eurasian-like component in her genome, perhaps a remnant of ancient genetic tendency due to which various Upper Paleolithic West Eurasians score closest to South Eurasians with PCA tools. Knowing how much Zuds Wana contributed to the genetics of Anatolian hunter-gatherers, you would expect her to score the same way the Anatolian hunter-gatherers score, but she doesn't, because she lived over a dozen thousand years prior. Regarding her phenotype, she is predicted to have brown eyes, black hair color, olive or Mediterranean skin color, wavy hair texture, and a rather snub than Greek nose shape. She carried variants for higher odds of protruding nose bridge and smaller nose size. Based on her COMT, MAOA, and MAOB genotypes, she is predicted to exhibit a warrior phenotype, which means she had quicker dopamine reuptake and lower dopamine levels. This is a phenotype most common outside of Europe. She is predicted to have a higher number of D2 dopamine receptors, but despite that still scores average for the odds of bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. She also scores average for odds of ADHD and depression. She scores below average for odds of autism, which is uncommon for Eurasians. She carries two variants for Melanesian blonde hair and TYRP1, which is very unusual and is likely due to a miscall. She also carries two uncommon variants for deafness. She has high genetic predisposition to rheumatoid arthritis, which is a common condition for West Eurasians, but also for asthma and vitiligo. She has a predisposition to lower levels of plasma homocysteine and lower odds of cardiovascular issues. She has a predisposition to lower odds of epithelial cancers based on her 8Q24 genotypes, but a slight predisposition to autoimmune disorders based on HLA genotypes. She carries two rare risk variants for myosclerosis, irritable bowel syndrome, and familial hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Most likely in all three cases, the risk variants are not genuine and are due to miscalls. She carries two copies of the farmer CLTCL1 gene variant which leads to advantages in processing carbohydrates and sugars in the diet. She has a predisposition to lowered odds of obesity, but also lower odds of Alzheimer's, type 2 diabetes, atrial fibrillation, and gout. She has either roughly average predisposition to everything else, or not enough data in the file to make a prediction. Moving on to biomarkers, she scores roughly average for every biomarker, but there are still things to discuss. For example, she scores slightly above average for level of vitamin D which OS typical for Europeans and West Eurasians today, slightly above average for level of both LDL and HDL cholesterol, which is also rather typical for Europeans, slightly below average score for glucose levels, which is a positive score as it offers some protection from certain metabolic conditions, slightly. Above average for blood pressure, which is a negative but isn't that big of a deal because her score is very close to the average, slightly above average for level of iron and blood, which is surprising considering she doesn't carry hemochromatosis variants, slightly above average for levels of sex hormone binding globulin, which is good because it decreases the odds of hormone imbalances and infertility, slightly below average for red blood cell count, which is good because it leads to decreased odds of various cardiovascular issues, very slightly above average score for telomere length which shows a predisposition to above average lifespan, and slightly above average height. Regarding her blood type, it cannot be determined with precision due to the poor quality of the DNA itself, but based on the limited evidence we have it seems that she most likely belongs to the A blood group. 
Thank you for watching my video until the end. In case you enjoyed it, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, of course, I am very excited to read your comments and find out what you found to be interesting or insightful from the video. And of course, in the description of the video, you will find, as always, the links to buy my Trade Predictor Executable, which currently costs $25. That allows you to generate health and trades and uh, appearance and basically everything reports on a DNA sample. I programmed it myself. I think it should cost a lot more than $25, but I sell it for $25 because I understand that uh, the brand and the name typically costs a lot and I don't have a brand yet. I am making a name for myself. So enjoy it while it is so cheap. Uh, but also I sell reports for $3.85. The link to buy those reports uh, with my trade predictor, very cheap by the way, $3.85 for a DNA report. Where else can you find a service that is this cheap and this high quality? I don't think anywhere you can find a service like that. So the link for that is also going to be in the description of the video. And in the description of the video will also be the link to buy the raw DNA file of Zudzuana, the actual file that this video is about. Uh, you can buy it on Payhip. I think I'm going to make this $3 or $3.5 because it's not a very high quality file. It's kind of like a poor, poor quality file. It's around 10 megabytes in size. So I think this, this file, I'm going to make it $3.5 for the price and you can purchase this file and you can do anything you want with it. You can run it through GED match. You can go upload it to my heritage. You can go and um, run it through my trade predictor and you can do all kinds of things with the file. So you, you can actually buy the file from me from the link that's in, that's in the description of the video. So check out the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.